we begin with the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thanking Him, thanking Him for all of His amazing bounties upon us. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters, we've all heard this hadith many, many times. And it is the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when one part of the body hurts, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the similitude of believers in regard to mutual love and affection is that of one body. When any limb of it aches, the whole body aches. O Qamakal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is narrated in hadith Muslim. And we've all heard this hadith many times, over and over again. But many of us have never actually experienced it in our lives. We've heard the hadith, but we actually haven't experienced it. But now, we're experiencing it. When you talk to our community members here in Pleasanton, here in San Ramon, here in the Bay Area, many of us are, are feeling sleeplessness. Many of us are feeling anxiety. Many of us are feeling depression because of what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Many of us were feeling depression and sleeplessness because of what is happening to our brothers and sisters in Gaza. And we're finally experiencing what the Prophet ﷺ meant in this hadith. That if one part, even though they're so many miles away, they're one part of the ummah, even though they're under immense distress, we're still experiencing it and feeling it here. Of course, not at the same level, but we're feeling something because we're connected and we're one ummah. Brothers and sisters, I know that everyone has been hearing about Palestine and Gaza. And we need to continue to talk about Palestine and Gaza. If we don't talk about our brothers and sisters in Philistine, who's going to talk about our brothers in Philistine? If we don't talk about them, who's going to talk about them? We're the only ones. We have to talk about them, brothers and sisters. They have to be, every day, we should be listening to a podcast, uh, reading history books, understanding the situation, arming ourselves with knowledge. Because if we don't defend them with our words and our actions, then who is? They, we're, we, we're all we got. We're all we got. This is a youth khutbah. There's young children in the, in the audience, so we're going to keep it as PG as possible, but we have to discuss this. At this moment, in our seen reality, Gaza is experiencing a genocide before our very eyes. The occupying force has cut off food, water, and fuel to a population of 2.3 million civilians. More than 4,200 Palestinians have been massacred by the occupying force in the last 12 days, brothers and sisters. We see these numbers, think about the number. 4,000 comma 200. Think about the number. More than 1,000 of those deaths were children. More than 1.1 million people have lost their homes. It's confusing times. You can fact check me. This is the latest information. It's probably changed in the last few hours. This is our known situation that we're seeing. But as believers, brothers and sisters, we know that there is an unseen reality happening at the same time. That is the seen reality, but there is an unseen reality happening at the same time. And I've taken this information from our teacher, Sheikha uh, Dalia Mugahid, I believe. Uh, she, she made this, uh, this example that there's a seen reality and there is an unseen reality. So the seen reality is what we just described, but there's also an unseen reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 2, in Surah 2, Surah Baqarah, verse 154, that never say that those martyred in the cause of Allah are dead. In fact, they are alive, but you do not perceive it. We understand in our deen and in our religion that the affair of a believer is always good. If the believer lives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them. If, a, someone, if, if one of our brothers and sisters in Gaza lives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them. If their life is taken, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them. This is the outcome of a believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 3, verse 136, Do not lose heart nor fall into despair. You will be the victor if you are true believers. Imam Rumi said, ours is not a caravan of despair. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested us. He has tested us, brothers and sisters. How has he tested you and me? We live in the Bay Area. Our, we have more food than we can imagine. We have multiple cars in our garages. We have roof over our heads. Our kids are safe. They go to school. How has he tested us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested us, brothers and sisters, by making us alive in this time. By making us alive in this time. When we read the history books, brothers and sisters, 
when we read the history books, we say that when we think to ourselves that when the Native Americans were being oppressed, I would have been on the side of the Native Americans. When slavery was taking place in this country, I would have been on the side of Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass and all the abolitionists. We read about the apartheid that took place in South Africa and we say, I would have been on the side of Nelson Mandela. We say we would have been on the side of Cesar Chavez, of Gandhi. When we read the history, we say this. When we read the history, we say, I would have been on the side of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But now we actually have a litmus test to show us what side we would have been on. We actually have a litmus test right now. We're seeing a genocide happen in front of our eyes, and the litmus test is Palestine. If you stand with Palestine and our brothers and sisters in Gaza, then you know what side you're on and where you would have been on in history. SubhanAllah. We can feel hopeless, and we can start to despair. This is normal, but we have to remember that ours is not a caravan of despair. And we have to remember that this is not our first rodeo. This is not our first rodeo, brothers and sisters. The Quran is filled with stories about what we're experiencing right now. We have a large and heavy task in front of us, but we leave the outcome to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We leave the outcome to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we focus on what we can do, brothers and sisters, on what we can do. Nuh alayhi salam called his people for centuries to Islam to the haq, to the truth. But only a handful of followers ended up following him when his time came to leave this earth. Would someone say that Nuh salam failed? Astaghfirullah, no. He did not. He did the work day in and day out to call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah in his infinite wisdom gave him the followers that he gave him. We learn this same lesson in the story of Yunus alayhi salam. Yunus alayhi salam was calling to his people day in and day out. And he got frustrated. They weren't accepting the message. So he said, I'm going to leave and try to deliver the message to another people who might be more receptive to it. Our, our scholars of uh, tafsir tell us that he didn't give up. He just said, I'm going to change tactics. I'm going to change tactics and do it to give the message to someone else. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give him the, per the, the, the permission to do that. It wasn't up to him. And so we know the story. He got thrown off the ship. He was in the sea. And then a whale swallowed him. He was in three darknesses. And he said, La ilaha illa ant subhanak inni kuntu min al He learned his lesson. He made dua. He turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah brought him back to his people to finish doing the work. He had to do his part. SubhanAllah, beautiful story we learn, we learn from Yunus alayhi salam. We learn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Musa alayhi salam, Idhab ila fir'auna innahu tagha. Go to Fir'aun. For verily he has transgressed. Musa is supposed to go to Pharaoh. He's Musa is Islam. He's the shepherd. How is he supposed to go to Pharaoh, this powerful king, and tell him to change his ways? The task in front of him is mighty and strong. Musa is Islam didn't waver. He didn't say, no, I'm not going to do this. I can't do this. I can't do my part. He did his part. And he freed his people. Subhanallah. We look at the story of Dawood and Goliath. Subhanallah. Dawood and Goliath. What if Dawood said, I can't fight this, this, this man. He has armor. He's strong. He's the most powerful soldier out of this army. And I just have a, have a, a slingshot. How am I supposed to do this? But he did the work day in and day out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him tawfiq. We leave the outcome to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Dawood was alive today, if you brought him right now and you showed him what was going on, the fact that his symbol, the Star of David, is being used to oppress people, Ya Latif, this is an exercise that all spiritual people should do. What side would Dawood be on? One side literally has rocks and sling, slingshots. SubhanAllah. We know the story of Ibrahim and Nimrod, Nimrud, the same story. This story, brothers and sisters, is highlighted to us again and again in the Quran. This is not our first rodeo. This is not our first rodeo. We turn to the Quran and we see how to be, how to act. We take inspiration from our prophets. These are not bedtime stories, brothers and sisters. This is revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us to gain lessons from, to gain inspiration from. Subhanallah. Subhanallah.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد There's a beautiful story narrated in the Sira. And there's different narrations, brothers and sisters, so if you're hearing one that's slightly different, it's okay. Uh, it's narrated that during the Battle of the Khandaq, the Battle of the Trench, when Medina was under siege, the army had Medina surrounded. The Quraysh army had Medina surrounded. No one was allowed in or out. Nothing was going in and out. Does it sound familiar, brothers and sisters? Does it sound familiar? Does it sound like Gaza? Medina was surrounded by the enemy. They were under siege. No one was going in or out. Trade wasn't happening in or out of Medina. They were under siege. And a Sahaba by the name of Jabir, radiallahu an, he narrates this. It is narrated that Umar radiallahu an, or maybe another Sahaba, there's different narrations, but Umar radiallahu an, let's just say, came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he was starving, he was hungry. And so he lifted up his shirt to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to show Rasulullah, look at, look, look at my situation, I'm hungry, I'm starving. And what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam respond with? He lifted up his shirt and he had two stones tied to his blessed torso. He had two stones tied to his blessed torso. Sh telling Umar radiallahu anhu and all the companions that I'm hungrier than you, I feel your pain. In fact, I'm feeling it more. Subhanallah. In Jabir radiallahu anhu, he's on the sidelines and he's seeing this interaction take place. And he says to himself, this, this is an injustice. How is God's messenger this hungry? How is God's messenger this hungry? This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he's starving. And so he decides to do something about it. He goes home to his wife and he says, whatever we have, whatever we have, whatever food we have, prepare it. We're going to feed God's messenger. We're going to fix this injustice. And so then he goes back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I'm inviting you to my house. Come to my house and I'm going to feed you. And look at the, this is hard, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He says to Jabir radiallahu anh, he says, Wahdi ya Jabir, Wahdi ya Jabir, by myself, O Jabir, alone, O Jabir, Rasulullah is more hungry than everyone else. And he's thinking about his companions. He's thinking about their pain, what they're feeling. SubhanAllah. And so Jabir radiallahu anh, he's in a position because he doesn't have enough to feed everyone. He doesn't have enough to feed anyone, but this is what Rasulullah said to him. So he says, yes, bring what you want, bring who you want, Abu Bakr, Umar, bring a few people. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa goes and he invites everyone. And he says, everyone, Jabir, Jabir is feeding us. Jabir is feeding us. And Jabir radiallahu anh, he's, he's, he's scared, he's, he's stressed out because he doesn't have enough to feed everyone. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says to him, don't serve anyone until I get there. Don't serve anyone until I get there. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gets there and he blesses the food. And he blesses the food. And everyone is able to eat. And Jabir radiallahu anh narrates that the food is not finishing. The pots that are holding the food, it's not finishing. It's not finishing. Everybody's eating. Everybody's being satisfied. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. What's the lesson in this story, brothers and sisters? What are the takeaways for us? The takeaway is this. Jabir radiallahu anh, there was an injustice happening. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions were starving. They were under siege. And Jabir radiallahu anh decided to do something about it. And because he did something about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed a miracle to happen where everyone was fed and everyone was taken care of. He saw an injustice and he did something about it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed a miracle to take place where everyone was taken care of. That's the first lesson. The second lesson is Jabir radiallahu anh, he didn't solve the, the, the whole crisis. He didn't end the war. He didn't destroy the enemy. What he did was small. But it wasn't small, it was big. He fed everyone. He fed everyone and he gave them the strength and the nourishment that they needed 
in order to fight off the enemy. And so, brothers and sisters, this story applies to us right now. We're seeing an injustice in our life. We're seeing the genocide of an entire people in our lifetime. What are we going to do about it? Let's do something about it. We see it. Let's be like Jabir radiallahu anhu. Let's do something about it. Even though it seems impossible. Even though it's small. We see an injustice and we have to do something about it. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we leave the outcome to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do our part and we leave the outcome to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the stories that we shared in today's khutbah, all the prophets, it's the same lesson over and over again, brothers and sisters. This isn't our first rodeo. We've been here before. This is in our DNA. This is in our blood, brothers and sisters. We can do this. We have a job. We have a task. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to to grant us tawfiq, inshallah. We're going to end with prayer for our brothers and sisters. One last thing that's very important to mention, it's a very tough time right now. And there's a lot of animosity. But we don't take anyone as our teacher, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with his companions, and they saw a caravan, uh, they saw a, pr uh, a procession go by. And it was a, it was a, it, they saw a procession go by, and it was a funeral procession. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up. And the companions say, why are you standing up, Ya Rasulullah? It's the, it's the funeral procession of a Jew. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, is it not a human soul? Subhanallah. This is our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even though the Jewish community gave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a hard time in Medina, this is still the lessons that he imparted upon us. Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq. Ya Rab, Ya Arhamar Rahimin, Ya Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak ta yadha jalali wa lakaram. Ya awwal al-awwaleen, ya akhir al-akhireen, ya rahmatan lil-alameen, ya kuwat al-mateen. Ya Arhamar Rahimin, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Arhamar Rahimin, Ya Allah. We ask you, Ya Allah, to grant Jannat al-Fradaus to all of our brothers and sisters who have passed away in Palestine. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, you are the one that is Karib, Ya Allah, you are Al Karib, you are Al Mawjud, Ya Arhamar Rahimin, Ya Allah. Have mercy on your servants in Gaza, Ya Allah. Have mercy on the children, Ya Allah. On the children, Ya Allah. On our babies, Ya Allah. There are babies, Ya Arhamar Rahimin, Ya Allah. There are children, Ya Allah. We're one Ummah, Ya Allah. Take care of them, Ya Allah. Take care of the children, Ya Allah. Take care of the children, Ya Arhamar Rahimin, Ya Allah. Take care of the children, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. Allow them to be with Ibrahim alayhi salam in a better place, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. Take care of them, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we turn to you and we only turn to you, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. You're the only one that can help us, Ya Allah. We put this situation in your capable hands, Ya Allah. But we're doing our part, Ya Allah. Grant us tawfiq, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. Have mercy on the children of Gaza. Have mercy on the women of Gaza. Have mercy on the elderly in Gaza, Ya Allah. Have mercy on the men of Gaza, Ya Rahman Rahim. Ya Allah. Keep them away, Ya Allah, from the plots and the plans of the oppressors. Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. Ya Rab, Ya Karim, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. We turn to you and only turn to you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we're learning from our brothers and sisters in Gaza, Ya Allah. They're giving us a master class in what it means to be Muslim, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. To, to, to turn to you, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. We, we, they're, they're a witness for us, Ya Allah. We're learning for them, ya, from them, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. We're learning from them, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us, Ya Allah. Forgive us, Ya Allah. Forgive us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Our leader just sent, said he's sending a billion dollars worth of our tax money over there. Don't let it be our tax money. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. It's not us, Ya Allah. We don't want this, Ya Allah. They're doing this to us, Ya Allah. They're doing this to us, Ya Allah. They're taking our money and they're doing this, Ya Allah. Don't hold us accountable on the day of Jashmi. Don't hold us accountable on the day of Jashmi. Ya Allah, we're not, we don't want to stand in front of you in response. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Ya Kareem, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, all we can do is call out to you, Ya Allah. 
All we can do is call out to you, Ya Rahman Rahimin, Ya Allah. We can't call out to anyone else. No one else is going to help us, Ya Allah. Be gentle with us, Ya Allah. Be gentle with us, Ya Allah. We're trying. We're doing our part, Ya Rahman Rahimin, Ya Allah. It seems like a little, Ya Allah, but we're doing our part, Ya Allah. They're trying to silence us, Ya Allah. They're trying to stop us, Ya Allah. But we won't be stopped, Ya Allah. We will never submit to... We will never submit when our leader is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's our leader, Ya Allah. That's our leader, Ya Allah. We're following him, Ya Allah. We're ready for this, Ya Allah. We're prepared for this, Ya Allah. We're still connected to your Qur'an, Ya Allah. We still have the stories you've imparted to us, Ya Allah. We still have the revelation, Ya Allah. We're still Muslim, Ya Allah. We have unity, Ya Allah. We're more unified now than ever, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. There's some, there's some, something in this that you're trying to teach us, Ya Allah. Allow us to see it. Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah. Ya Kareem, Ya Kareem, Ya Rahman Rahim. Ya Latif, Ya Latif, Ya Latif. Ya Latif, Ultaf Bina. Ya Latif, Ultaf Bina. Ya Latif, Ultaf Bina. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana wa Habib. وشفينا وتبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين قامة السلام الله أكبر